Hi, this is Brendan from Watto Training, and in this tutorial, we take a look at assignment 3091, which is a self driving assessment assignment. These guiding notes are for Queensland car instructor trainees. Here's the instructions for the assignment trainees are required to do three self assessment drives using the checklists below. Then, in the final part of the assessment, there are some self-reflection questions to answer. This assignment is designed to assess your own operational skills and hazard recognition and response skills in a range of situations and a variety of speed zones. You may identify strengths and areas of improvement, but either way, your own driving skills, road rule understanding and application, as well as attitudes, is a vital part of your instructional technique. Please aim for a drive of approximately 30 minutes for each of the self-assessments. Please read the QSAFE manual pages 44 to 64 to assist you with your understanding of the assessment criteria used in Queensland by driving examiners. This is the self-rating scale that trainee car instructors are required to use for the self-assessment assignment. The rating scale goes from five at the top, which is an excellent performance, down to four, very good performance, three is good, two is weak or less than acceptable, and one is unacceptable or poor. So training instructors are required to rate their driving performance using one of those numbers in the table that's provided. This is the first part of each self-assessment drive that training instructors are required to complete. If you run your eyes down the left column, you'll see that the day is required, the date, the start and finish time of the drive, the total number of minutes of driving, the weather conditions on the day, the traffic conditions, the type of vehicle that you're driving, the make of the vehicle, and its transmission, whether it's automatic or manual, for example. Then some self-assessment questions such as, have I had an adequate rest? Am I under the legal BAC limit? And am I in a fit state of mind? So what we're trying to do here is just get some context for the drive. And again, just some self-checking. This is section two of the self-assessment. And we've got two pre-drive checks here. We've got mirror adjustment and seat adjustment for the driver. So the driver would complete the 30 minute minimum drive and then at the end of the time would rate their performance from one through to five. This is section three of the self-assessment. It's looking at vehicle operation skills. It includes clutch control, accelerator, gears, steering control and steering operation, braking and road position. If, for example, the driver was in an automatic vehicle for the session, they would leave that clutch control section blank or put a line through those that those boxes section four in the self-assessment is hazard recognition and decision making skills the criteria for this section is observation and scanning shoulder checks mirror checks signaling hazard perception judgment which is looking essentially at give way safety margins which in some literature is called crash avoidance space, progress, which is often called driving to the conditions, speed control, and we note there is zero tolerance on speeding, and signs, traffic signals, and road markings. The final category is the system of vehicle control. And again, at the end of the drive, the driver would rate each of those criteria points from one through to five. This is section five in the self-assessment report, and the title is Specific Driving Situations Covered in the Drive. The training instructor is required to tick the right-hand column if encountered. If the situation was not encountered, then the training instructor would not tick the box. So we've got lane driving, such as lane change, driving uphills, driving downhills, curves and bends, merging and diverging. We've got intersections, this includes roundabouts, left turns, right turns, direction markings, direction signs, stop signs, stop lines, and also give way signs and give way lines. 
We've got to look at the traffic density when we drive. So this is high density traffic and low density traffic. And finally, crossings such as pedestrian crossings, children's crossings and level crossings. It's always good when you're conducting a self-assessment to get a nice uh, array of situations to you know, have a broad view of a driving performance. This is section six of the self-assessment. And now what we're looking at is sharing the road with other road users. So thinking about the other road users that might be out on the road when we're going for a drive. So we've got motorcycles, heavy vehicles, buses, bicycle riders, scooters, e-bikes, pedestrians, trams, emergency vehicles, and animals. Again, tick the box on the right hand side if encountered on the drive. Now we move on to the post drive reflection, section seven. Question one, what are three positives from my drive? The training instructor is required to think about their driving performance and write down three positives from their drive. It might've been that they maintained their speed control that they maintained their correct following distance from themselves and the vehicle in front. There might have been a tricky situation that they encountered safely. Question two in the self-reflection component asks, is there anything about the drive that I could improve upon? Examples of responses that I've seen include uh, more shoulder checks, e.g. lane changing, merging, curb departure, making sure that the driver indicates for five seconds before leaving the curb, palming the steering wheel, etc. And finally, what are the benefits of the three self-assessments? Why are we doing this assignment? Well, here's some reasons. I think there's a lot, but here's, here's some of the ones that are bouncing around in my mind. First of all, it helps training instructors to learn to assess to a criteria. We're using the QSAFE criteria in this particular assignment. Next, it promotes the skills of reflective practice and self-monitoring. It develops self-directed learning, helps training instructors to think about their own driving performance as a platform for observing the driving skills of their future students. It helps training instructors set improvement goals. And finally, it helps training instructors learn the benefit of self-assessment as they may wish to use it with their future students. Thanks for watching. This has been Brendan from Watto Training.